Hello everyone, myself Dr. Uddal Akhtar, GR2, Department of Radio Diagnosis, North Bengal Medical College. I will be presenting a case report on lung cancer, presenting as a contrary child metastasis. I have been guided by Professor Narayan Pandit and Professor Shohin Shindhuska. Cutaneous metastasis from primary malignancy is very uncommon clinical entity with a reported incidence of 0.2 to 10%. The presence of cutaneous metastasis as a first sign of a clinically silent visceral cancer is even rare. We described the case of a male patient who presented with a functional child metastasis as the initial manifestation of a lung cancer and further workup revealed the advanced nature of the disease. The report is to emphasize that the physicians should be aware of this rare clinical entity and appropriate investigations should be arranged for early diagnosis and implementation of appropriate treatment. The occurrence of skin lesions in lung cancer points towards a very bad prognosis. Introduction Cutaneous metastasis from a visceral malignancy is very uncommon clinical entity with a reported incidence ranging from 0.2 to 12 percent of all malignancies. Cutaneous metastasis generally indicate uh, advanced nature of the disease. They may be the first indication of a clinically occurred visceral malignancy. Therefore, in-depth investigation of the cutaneous metastasis is very important not only for a correct diagnosis but also for proper treatment of the cancer. The scalp is a favored location for distant metastasis in approximately 5 percent of cases involving the site. The interval between a primary and a metastatic diagnosis is more than 5 years in about 7% cases and half of the patients with cutaneous meds die within 6 months of the initial diagnosis. Scalp meds as the first manifestation of lung CA has been reported only a few times before this. Case report. So this 70 year old gentleman came to the orthopedy with complaints of form swelling over his scalp for the last few months and history of chronic low back pain for several years. He had history of significant weight loss in the last 6 months of around 10 kgs. He was a chronic BD smoker for the last 50 years and clinical examination revealed a painless, movable, non ulcerated nodule in a right hyperitor region measuring approximately 2 cm in diameter with, the, with a normal overlying skin without any evidence of infection. So the patient was referred to a department as a part of the institutional treatment protocol for a LS fine X-ray. Incidentally, when the X-ray was being analyzed by us, we saw the in the LS fine a blunted costotonic angle was seen and we confirmed the findings in USG and at the same setting we did a USG guided tap and send the fluid for pathological analysis. The plural fluid analysis came back with atypical M cells on microscopy and we started an array of investigations including HRCT, CECT and MR. <coughs> CECT thorax revealed the intrahilar mass with narrowing of the right main bronchus with encasement of the right pulmonary artery along with ground glass opacities, atelectric exchanges and artificial distortion. There were fibrotic exchanges and paraceptical emphysema in the right lung as well. There were bilateral plural effusion, pericardial effusion and multiple enlarged mediastinal limb nodes. Multiple metastatic foci were seen in the ribs, vertebrae, pelvic bones, both the clavicles, scapula and adjuvant glass. MRI screening of the brain and the whole spine was requested and revealed a soft tissue mass of 2 plus 2 plus 1.5 cm in the right hyperitral region which was ISO2 hyper intense on situated images. Multiple areas of altered signal intensity were noted at C7, C8, and L1 vertebrae with collapse of C7 vertebrae. There was no area of altered signal intensity in the brain. A provisional diagnosis of a right lung mass, multiple metastasis was made. A CT guided FNAC was done from the lung mass, and US guided FNAC was done from the scalp lesion, and the report came back as adenosine. However, the patient shortly died after initiating treatment. So this is the figure, the A and B are HRCT and CECT images respectively showing the intrahilar mass with narrowed right main bronchus and post contrast enhancement along with traveling GGO, fibrotic changes and bilateral full effusion. Uh, figure 2 shows multiple, area, multiple lytic, areas of lytic lesion in pelvic bones and vertebrae. <coughs> figure 3 showing the bone window showing multiple rounded lesions in the right scapula and both the clavicles. Figure 4 are CCT images showing bilateral adrenal gland metastasis and multiple multiple rib involvement. And figure 5 is a CCT image showing pericardial effusion. Figure 6 is a situated MR showing a 2 cross 2.5 cm ISO2 hyper intense lesion in the right hyperitral scalp, suggestive of metastasis. Figure 7 showing MR images at multiple levels showing altered signal intensity at C7, C8 and L1 with pathological fracture of C7 vertebra. So coming to discussion, lung cancer is a leading cause of cancer related death 
accounting for about 25% of the total. <coughs> a cohort study of more than 2,000 patients of in a non-small cell carcinoma found that the median age of diagnosis was 64 years with highest incidence in men in whom the most common presenting symptoms were cough and dyspnea. The presenting symptoms can result from intra and extrathoracic effects of the cancer as well as from effects of distant unrelated meds, which are paraneoplastic syndromes. It is important to recognize that lung cancer can also be incidentally found by radiological investigation in patients presenting with bronchopulmonary symptoms. <coughs> Cutaneous manifestations of the presentation are indicative of a very advanced nature of the disease and have a poor prognosis, resulting in an average survival of 3 to 5 months. As compared to other organs, skin is an uncommon sign in the metastasis accounts for fewer than 10% of all cases. Skin metastasis are a rare sign of visceral cancer. In a retrospective analysis by looking bill at all, 7,000 patients were studied and skin involvement was seen only in 0.8% of cases. The average time for lung cancer to metastasize to skin was found to be 5.7 months. Occasionally, the skin lesion presented simultaneously with or before the diagnosis of a lung cancer. Skin metastases from lung cancer are generally poorly differentiated, involving the lymphovascular system and restricted to the subcutaneous tissue and dermis. Adenocarcinoma is the most common type of metastasis from lung cancer, followed by squamous cell carcinoma. A retrospective analysis by Brownstein and Helwig showed that a metastatic lesion of the skin was the first clinical sign of lung cancer. Another retrospective analysis by Song et al. showed 2.8% of advanced cases of non small cell cancer accompanied with skin metastasis. In conclusion, we report this case to give emphasis that careful dermatological examination can be invaluable in giving clues to internal hidden malignancies. Collective scalp metastasis as a fire sign of focal lung cancer is an extremely rare occurrence, and despite its rarity, metastatic skin disease should always be considered in the differential diagnosis in patients with a history of smoking or lung cancer who present with cutaneous nodules. Declaration Appropriate consent was taken, and I declare there is no conflict of interest or funding for resources. Here are my references. Thank you.